I'm at EuroPCR, but I'm actually talking about a paper that's coming up in uh, actually the May issue of the Jack Cardiovascular Interventions. It's an editorial comment. The minimalist approach for transcatheter aortic valve replacement in high-risk patients. And uh, Dr. Danny DeVere from uh, Washington Hospital Center in Washington, D.C., co-author of this particular editorial. Uh, this starts from something that was uh, some work from Dr. Cribier's group, correct? Uh, what, what was his approach, and let, let's talk about your comment, but first, Dr. Kirby's work. Nowadays, we are 10 years after the first in men TAVI procedure performed under local anesthesia. At the beginning, people were trying to find a solution to the high-risk patients with a less invasive procedure, procedure that will not involve doing a cardiopulmonary bypass will not involve touching the ascending aorta, will not involve splitting the ribs, and also maybe to not involve general anesthesia. There are many high-risk patients that general anesthesia is a very, very problematic procedure for them, like patients with lung disease, patients with several anomalies, and in general, frail and elderly people could Correct. benefit by a, an approach that doesn't use that. Correct. So we have for transcatheter aortic valve replacement two strategies doing the anest for anesthesia. We have the general anesthesia and we have the local anesthesia, or MAC it is called also, monitored anesthesia control or sedation only. And it is very interesting that in Europe, majority of the centers doing transfemoral TAVI procedures use only conscious sedation, only local anesthesia. While in the US, almost all of the centers, there is a recent survey about that, 96% use systematically general anesthesia during these procedures. And we must understand that each, each approach has its advantages and limitations, obviously. And it seems that we, we need to integrate all the data about the patient, about the procedure, and to have a specific decision per patient. In terms of clinical message, what do you think in the United States cardiologists should learn if anything at this point in time, with based on the data from what they're working on here in, in Europe? Well, first, in the US, we are doing a very, very good job. You, you, can be, <laughs> you can be sure of that. We can see the results, the partner trial, the results are amazing. We have two-year results already. It is all fine-tuning now, it seems, with that. But it's also important. So I think that you, we need to learn from Europe that approach of, of a conscious sedation that we in the Washington Hospital Center use quite commonly recently. And to see in which situations it could work best. Because there are, there is, there are several patients that probably could earn a lot by using conscious sedation only with them. For, insta for, for instance, the chronic lung disease patients. Patients that if you intubate them, right. they could not be easily extubated later on. And other patients as well. So at the present time, read the paper is one of the first things people can do. Uh, go to Jack Interventions, the, the Professor Kirby paper is there, and Dr. DeVere's comment. And look for yourself, look at the data that is available, and then see if it's time to consider some changes. For CardioSource Interventional News, from EuroPCR, I'm Rick McGuire.